Right, okay, so we're going to go through uh, the final few questions then on this paper. Right, so question 17 is a, a real beaut of a question. Um, you know, if this one comes out for five marks, you are sorted. Um, just pure learning, just a couple of points to be, to be aware of. Uh, first of all, it does ask you to show how sulfuric acid behaves as a catalyst. So you've got to show uh, the formation of the NO2 plus ion. And then just be careful where you substitute your uh, nitro group. It does ask you specifically for it to be on the third carbon atom. So you do need to add it to that carbon there uh, to get the right isomer at the end. And then finally, just make sure that you reform your catalyst. For uh, this iron here, um, you've got to be careful that your delocalized structure breaks around that carbon there. So the broken circle is on that carbon there. Um, so let's just do the mechanism. So first of all, the electrons are going to come out of the delocalized structure to attack the NO2 plus group. Then the hydrogen uh, carbon bond is going to break uh, to go back to give you your product um, uh, plus H plus. So should we just add that in there? So you're going to make your product like so. NO2 plus H plus. And then the H plus is going to uh, attack or add to uh, HSO4 minus to give you back your H2SO4. Oh, right, so again, this is quite a nice one, really. Um, the first one is you're just making, uh, you know, calculating uh, percentage yield. So you find, first of all, your moles of benzoic acid that you uh, start with, um, which is just that mass divided by the molar mass. You then find the number of moles of uh, three nitrobenzoic acid that you, you form, and then you just do that number divided by that number times by 100 to give you 71.3%. Um, now, we also need to describe a method to obtain a pure sample of 3 nitrobenzoic acid from the impure solid. So, uh, because they're solids, we're looking at recrystallization. So, the first point you need to make, you're going to recrystallize. And the way you do that is you dissolve the impure product in a minimum volume of hot solvent. Um, you then cool um, the solution and filter off your solid um, and then wash with cold solvent to finally purify it. Um, then how are you going to check that it is uh, pure? Well, the obvious one is to check the melting point um, and then compare it against known values. Uh, the pure sample I mean, will have a very sharp melting point. The more impure it is, the larger the range of melting point that you will achieve. So carry on with aromatic chemistry. We've now got phenol, benzene and benzoic acid. And they've given us some um, data here uh, for us to analyse. State the trend in relative ease of nitration. Well, hopefully you can see that um, it gets generally harder. Um, phenol is very easy uh, to nitrate. You only need 20 degrees C and no catalyst. Um, benzene um, is when you start having a catalyst and you both need a catalyst for benzene and benzoic acid. However, benzene uh, will react at 55 degrees C. Benzoic acid, you need to whop the temperature up to 100 degrees C. So phenol is the easiest to nitrate and benzoic acid is the hardest. Now, why is that? Well, um, the uh, carboxylic acid group is actually electron withdrawing. Um, if you think about it, uh, you've got uh, this uh, group going on um, and attached to a benzene ring like so. Um, however, you could redraw that when you think of your um, uh, resonance structures. That could be minus there, which means you've got a plus charge on your carbon atom there, which is obviously going to draw electrons out of your benzene ring. However, the oxygen in um, phenol, obviously you remember the oxygen's got a lone pair of electrons on him and that then gets partially dilated in the ring. The electron density of the ring increases and it makes it more susceptible to electrophilic attack. 
So uh, this is quite a nice uh, synthetic uh, root. Um, first of all, we're going to brominate uh, this boy. Um, for that, you need Br2 and um, aluminium tribromide catalyst. Uh, for that to work, you can also use FeBr3 if you like. Um, that then gives you your intermediate here. You then got to reduce that. To reduce it, I uh, hope you remember you will use tin in concentrated HCl. Another student attempts the same synthesis but carries out the reduction before bromination. He or she was surprised to find the two structural isomers had been formed instead of the organic desired product. Why? Well, NH2 uh, is going to be like phenol uh, because, again, the uh, nitrogen atom, when it's attached to the benzene ring like so, he's got uh, a lone pair of electrons on him which can donate into the benzene ring, which makes him 2, 4, 6 um, directing. Um, so, obviously, the if you're only brominating once, the 2 position is the same as the 6 position in terms of isomers. So, we can say the NH2 is 2, 4 directing, and therefore those are the two isomers that we would make. So, this is a, a very nice mechanism. Uh, we're going to add a cyanide group. So remember, put your dipoles on, you've got your lone pair of electrons from the uh, cyanide attacking the carbon. The chloride is then going to leave to give you your product like so. Right, so another synthetic route here. Um, so here you need to note you're, you're ending up with a hydroxy nitrile. Uh, to end up with a hydroxy nitrile, you need to start with a, a carbonyl. Um, and obviously, you can see if you're adding this group here, you're basically starting with uh, just having one carbon there. Um, so you're starting with methanol, uh, which is compound G. Um, you've then got to go from here to here. That is a uh, hydrolysis that you would do that with. Um, so for hydrolysis, you are going to just use HCl aqueous. You can also use uh, H2SO4 if you like. Uh, it doesn't really matter. Um, to go here, you are reducing it. So you're going to use H2 and a nickel catalyst like so. Uh, you can also use lithium aluminium hydride if you like for that one, but probably wouldn't. Okay, moving on. Um, nothing too bad so far. Um, compound H reacts with dilute hydrochloric acid to form a salt. Yep, sure. Uh, why? Well, the key thing is you have to say the nitrogen atom has a lone pair of electrons on him um, and therefore can accept H+. Um, and as you can see, the um, you've added H+, onto the nitrogen atom there, and you've also got your chloride cation. A uh, compound I, which I've drawn here, just for a little bit of help, um, can form a polymer. How can it do that? Well, you've got an alcohol group and you've got a carboxylic acid group. So they can add, like so, uh, C double bond O, O, and then you're going to add to another CH2, C double bond O, like so. Now, why is this going to be biodegradable? Well, hopefully you can see it's a uh, polyester um, and therefore it can be hydrolyzed. Right, so we're now looking at nylon. Now, nylon, uh, you're, you can see, is a polyamide. Um, so we make a polyamide normally from a dicarboxylic acid and a diamine. Um, um, so you can see like so, that they're going to be our repeat units. So uh, if we just complete it, you're going to have your carboxylic acid like so. And then um, don't forget you need two hydrogens on your nitrogen like so. Um, now, uh, okay, so it's told me that nylon 66 has got a molar mass, relative molecular mass of 21,500. Number of repeat units. Well, if you uh, do this, 
uh, you will end up with this being equal to 95.1 now it's got to be a whole number so you could go for 95 um, obviously you can go for 96 if you want right so we've now got to construct an equation for complete combustion of an unsaturated alcohol so if it's unsaturated you're going to take away two hydrogen atoms from the general formula of a um, saturated alcohol so you end up with C5H10O and if you uh, balance that out um, remember that you've got five carbons there so you must form five carbon dioxides you've got ten hydrogens there and therefore that number is always uh, that number divided by two to give you five and then always do this one first not forgetting you've got your O there um, okay, so then we've got a nice uh, hydrogen bonding diagram, so nothing too, too horrific here. Uh, don't forget for this to put your dipoles on, uh, both molecules there. That, of course, there is your H bond, like so. Um, and these guys here, they are your lone pair of electrons, which the H bond must end at, upon. So why is hexan one o less soluble than hexan one six i Well, quite straightforward really, isn't it? Um, you've obviously got uh, two OH groups for hexan one uh, six diol, so it's going to form more hydrogen bonds with water, so it's going to be more soluble. So we have uh, yet another synthetic route. So here we go. Um, they've given us compound K and they've told us uh, to get to compound K from this guy here, it's reduction. Um, so you've got an alcohol here, um, secondary alcohol, so you end up going to start with a ketone here. Um, what do you need for that? Well, it's going to be sodium borohydride, so NaBH4, and you normally do that in water. Um, so that's going to give you your secondary alcohol. You're then going to react it with sodium bromide and uh, H2SO4. That, you remember, generates HBr in situ and will allow you to do a nucleophilic substitution reaction on the OH group to give you your uh, bromoalkane. Um, and then an acid catalyst and a heat, you're going to remove the OH group, but... You could do that in two ways. You've got an H there. Let's just get rid of this for a minute. Um, you're going to have an H on that carbon and you've also got an H on that carbon. So you could remove that to give you H2O, in which case your double bond would be there. Or alternatively, you could remove those two in which your double bond like so. So we're going to start off by naming the compound that I drawn in yellow. Uh, you can hopefully see you've got a ring of six carbon atoms, so you're looking at cyclohexane. You've got an OH group coming on there, so it's cyclohexane O. And then finally you've got a methyl group coming off the third carbon, so 3-methyl cyclohexanol. Uh, part D is going to talk about the oxidation of butan 1 o butan one o is of course a primary alcohol. So if you react it, first of all, if you heat it with K2Cr2O7 acidified and distill the product, you're going to make an aldehyde, which will be butanal, which is this equation here. Um, if you, um, if you uh, reflux it um, and you, uh, you don't distill the product, uh, you reflux it with K2Cr2O7 acidified, you would make butanoic acid, which is this guy here, and you need to add uh, two square bracket O, and I've drawn the two products there. Okay, so we now need to determine the molecular formula of this compound. Now, very nicely, they have given us the uh, percentage by mass. So over here, uh, you just divide each of those by the relative atomic mass of the atom, find the ratio, find the simplest uh, whole number ratio between them, and you get 4 to 4 to 1. Um, if you then look at the uh, molar mass um, of the compound, which is 136, 
uh, you realise that you have to times that formula by 2 to give you C8, H8, O2. OK, qualitative tests are carried out on, on an aromatic compound and the results are shown below. Determine the functional groups in the compound. OK, this is quite interesting. So, um, it's slightly acidic but does not react with uh, sodium carbonate. So, you're looking at a phenol group there. You get an orange precipitate with 2,4-DMP but no change with tolerance reagent and therefore you're looking at a ketone. So you've got a phenol and a ketone. Um, the phenol, because it's weakly acidic, but doesn't react with sodium carbonate. Uh, the ketone, because you get an orange precipitate with 2,4-DMP, um, but no reaction with Tollens reagent. Right, so we now need to work out the structure. Okay, well, this peak here is going to be due to the C double bond O there. These peaks here are your carbon atoms on the aromatic ring. And notice you've got four. So um, it's looking like you've got that type of structure there um, to give you your four different environments on your benzene ring. Um, okay, so they're my six. I need to find um, room for another two hydrogens. I know I've got a phenol, so let's put my phenol group there. Um, so it therefore looks like I'm going to have C double bond O there, and then I'm going to have a methyl group there like so. Because I've got to have a ketone. Remember, it can't be an aldehyde, which is why the C double bond O must be attached to the benzene ring. And that's your structure. Okay, so they give me compound L and it contains carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen only. Um, they've given me the NMR spectrum um, and uh, the number of peaks. They tell me that compound L is refluxed with HCl and it forms two compounds, M and N. Um, now, on the, on the paper they've removed it, but this is pretty much what the, the infrared sp spectrum of M would look like. Um, and M obviously contains an OH group there and it contains a C double bond O and this is very broad. So M is a carboxylic acid. If you turn the page, you will see that N is an alcohol. So N is an alcohol and M is a carboxylic acid. So if you think about it, L is going to be an ester. Okay, so now that we know that, we know that we have got this group going on like so. And now we need to complete it. So if we now go to the NMR spectrum, you can see here, let's start with question, uh, uh, PPM, uh, chemical shift 4, PPM. You have got a, a, a peak of intensity 2, which is a singular, which is CH2 joined to an O. So I know I have got that group going on there. Let's see what else I can do. If I now look at this one, this is coming in for the peak where you've got a CH2 group, because you've got an intensity 2, attached to a C double bond O. So again, I know I have got that. But I now need to complete it. I've also got, can you see that this is a quartet? So it must be attached to a CH3 group like so, which would be that CH3 group there, but that one, and those two are linked. Whenever you see a triplet quartet combination, it's normally a CH3, CH2 group going on, which leaves me with this group here to be on the end like so. Now, again, a singlet of intensity 9 is shouting at you that it's going to be that kind of group there, a carbon with three CH3 groups there. And that is your compound. So you can work it out, even if you don't get to the compound, just really explain how you assign each of those from the NMR. Um, you know, and the fact that you know it's an ester and so on will, will get you marks. Okay, and that is the end of the paper.